Okay, hello everyone. I'm Nabil Murad. I would like to start with an introduction to formulas and functions in Excel. And I'm going to switch to my camera. And I'm wondering what is a formula in Excel. So if I type a very simple calculation like 25 multiplied by 6 equals 150 plus 10 equals 160 divided by 4 equals 40 minus 3 let's say equals 37. So in Excel a formula is defined as being anything which starts with an equal sign and is not preformatted as text. So a formula in Excel consists of three parts. By definition, an equal sign, and then these symbols here called operators. And these operators join things like these numbers, and these numbers are called operands. Operators can be further subdivided into two types. So I have the addition, the subtraction, the multiplication, the division, and these are called arithmetic operators. Or I might have symbols like these, greater than, smaller than, greater than or equal, smaller than or equal, and this symbol which means not equal, and these are called comparison operator. Whenever we use a comparison operator, the result is known up front because it can only be a true or a false. What about the operands? Operands are these numbers and these numbers are called constants. The second type of operand is called the cell reference. And the third type of operand is called a range. The fourth type of operand is called a named range. The main concept of calculation in Excel, the concept created in the late 70s by Dan Bricklin and Bob Frankston, is based upon the fact that we use a box for each number. And instead of performing our calculations on the numbers, we perform our calculation on the box. So what happens when we perform our calculation on the container instead of performing our calculation on the content? If at any time we change the contents of the container, everything automatically updates. That's why it's better to use a cell reference, a range, or a named range, that's the container, rather than using the contents, which are the constants, which defeats the purpose of using Excel. Well, now I'm going to switch to Excel and show you some examples on how to use the different types of operands and how to use the different types of operators. So let's switch to Excel. So this is the introduction worksheet. And here I'll be performing groups of calculations. In the first group of calculation, I'll be using a constant. In the second group, I'll be using a cell reference. In the next group, I'll be using a range. And in the last group, I'll be using a named range. So let's start with the constant. And we know that defeats the purpose of using Excel. So we are just showing you that we can use numbers directly in our calculations. And because a formula is anything which starts with an equal sign, so I'll be typing equal, 135, and then a plus sign, and then 247. To get the result, I can do one of two things. Either hit enter or click on the check mark to the left side of the formula bar. That's the equivalent of the enter key. So when I hit enter, I get the result. In my next calculation, I want to subtract. So I want to subtract 729.2 from 1413.6. The bigger number first and the smaller number 729.2. And to get the result, I hit Enter. I want to divide. So I'll be typing an equal sign. That's the definition. So I'll type 144 and then a forward slash divided by 12. When I hit Enter, I get the result. 
In my next calculation, I want to multiply equal sign 65.5 and the multiplication symbol, the answer is multiplied by 6, and then I hit enter. In my last calculation, I want 2 to the power of 14, which means 2 multiplied by 2 14 times. I start by typing an equal sign, and then I type number 2, and then I type the caret shift 6 on my keyboard, and then I type 14. When I hit enter, it will be returning 16,384. That's the total number of columns in a single Excel worksheet. In the next group of calculations, we'll be using a cell reference. So I start by adding the contents of K5 to the contents of K6. So I type an equal sign, and then I'll be typing K5, and then a plus sign, and then I type K6 and then I hit enter, automatically it's adding the contents of these cells. And because typing the cell reference is not really practical, so better than typing, I'll be using my mouse to select the cell. So in my next calculation, I want to subtract K4 from K6. So I type an equal sign, and then click on K6, and then I type a minus sign, and then click on K4. Accidentally, I clicked on a wrong cell, so what happens when we click on a wrong cell? I'm going to click on a totally wrong cell. At this point, do not waste your time by using the backspace key, because you don't need to do that whenever you select a wrong cell. Just click on another cell and it will replace it. Click on a third one and so on. So I'm clicking on K4 and it replaces the previous one without the need of hitting the backspace key. When I hit enter, I get the result. In the next calculation, I want to divide K6 by H10. So I'll be typing an equal sign, click on cell K6, and then type a forward slash, click on cell H10, and then I hit enter. As I always say, it's not uncommon to make errors when you perform calculations in Excel, but the most important thing is to be aware of the different formula auditing techniques that we have in Excel. I'll be mentioning few of them in this exercise. The first and the most commonly used formula auditing technique is called the range finder. And what does it mean, the range finder? It means I'll be putting my cell in the edit mode. And to put my cell in the edit mode, I hit the F2 key on my keyboard. And when I hit the F2, each one of the cell references in my calculation will appear with a different color. And if you look at the corresponding cells, each one of them will show a thick border around the selected cell. So by looking at the thick blue border and look at the blue cell reference, I know that this cell corresponds to this cell reference. By looking at the thick red border and then looking at H10, I know that this cell corresponds to this cell reference. If I wish to make a change, I can make it at this point. Otherwise, I hit enter and move to the next calculation. In my next calculation, I would like to multiply K5 by H11 equal sign click on K5, and then a multiplication symbol and click on H11, and then when I hit enter, I get the result. Another very commonly used formula auditing technique is to ask Excel to create some errors to the input values by tracing precedence. How do we do this? I'm selecting this cell, the one I want to evaluate, and then I go to the formula tab of the ribbon, and on the formula tab of the ribbon, I click on trace precedence, and when I click on trace precedence, Excel creates arrows to the input values, so I know which cells are used in my calculation. If I wish to make a change, I can make it at this point. Otherwise, in the same group, I click on remove arrows. I'll be moving to the next group of calculations in which I'll be using a function. And unlike a formula, in a function, we have a name, because the functions have a name, while a formula doesn't have a name. In a formula, I use operators like the addition, the subtraction, the multiplication, the division. While in a function, we don't use operators. Instead, we use input values. I'll be using some of the common functions to perform a calculation using the range with a blue fill. So I start with the sum function. So I select the first cell. I'm in cell K13, and I'll be typing equal sum. And then I hit the tab key to put the sum function inside the cell. And then what would you like to sum? I would like to sum the range in blue. So I click and drag, 
and I select the range in blue, you see the dancing ends all around your selection. Now, to get the result, I close the bracket and then hit enter, and that will be the result. I can also calculate the lowest value in a range. The lowest value means the minimum. The minimum is calculated by using a special function called the min. So I type equal min, and then I hit the tab key, and then click and drag to select the same exact range. And then when I close the bracket and hit enter, I'm getting the result. Changing any one of the input values, let's say I change this one, I make it 500, the one in the upper right corner, automatically the result of the sum function and the min function will update, and that's the beauty of Excel. It's dynamic. Everything updates. I hit Control z to undo. My next function will be a count function. So I'll be typing equal count, and then I hit tab. What would you like to count? I would like to count the range in blue. I close the bracket and hit enter. The count function is counting numeric values. So when I hit enter, it tells me you have 15 numeric values. What if I select one of the cells and I replace it by text? Let's say instead of 5, I'll be typing a name. And when I hit enter, it's excluded from the count. Now it says you have 14 because the count function does not count text. It counts only numbers. So I'm going to undo this. What about the blanks? What if I hit the delete key to delete a cell? When I hit the delete key, look at that. It's automatically excluded from the count because the count function does not count text. It does not count blanks. Let's undo. The max and average will work the same exact way. I'll be typing equal max. Max stands for maximum. And then when I click and drag to select the range, it will return the highest number in the range. Finally, I have an average function. And the average function is simply adding up the numbers and dividing them by the count. So if I say equal average, and then I hit tab, average of what? Average of this range, close the bracket and hit enter, and that's the average. But in case you want to create the same exact calculation, but you don't want to save them with the worksheet, all what you need to do is to click and drag and to select that range. And at the same time, all these calculations appear on the right side of the status bar. Without the need of creating any calculation, just compare the numbers and look at these. I have the same exact number on the right side of the status bar. But it looks like I don't have an average. That's not a problem. I can customize my status bar by right-clicking on the status bar and say, I want to bring one of these functions. So if I check the average, I would have added it. And when I click away, here it shows 9.6, the same exact average. In my next group of calculations, I'll be using a named range. And I want to name a range. I'll be naming the range in blue. And then I'll be naming the range in red. In order to name a range, whether it consists of one single cell or a huge number of cells. Step number one for naming is to select whatever you want to name. So if I click and drag to select the range that I want to name, I'm selecting the range in blue. And then I go up at the top to the left side of the formula bar. And then I click. And when I click, I can type any name I want. So I'll be typing, let's say, I named the range Greg. But this name will go away. If I click outside right now, it won't stick. So for the name to stick, I must hit enter. And when I hit enter, the name stick. But I cannot use it directly in my calculation before testing, making sure that Excel recognizes the range by its name. And to do this, I click outside. And when I click outside to deselect the range, I go back to the name box. But this time, I click on the down arrow. And when I click on the down arrow, if I select the range, if it becomes highlighted, that means Excel recognizes the range by its name. So let's test. When I click on Greg, it becomes highlighted. Let's test it in a calculation. So in column M, I'll be creating the same exact function, equal sum. And then I hit tab. What would you like to sum? I want to sum a range that I named Greg. So if I type like GR, here is the name. It appears in the IntelliSense list of Excel. All what I need to do is to hit the tab key. And when I hit the tab key, and then I close bracket, here you go. I'm getting the same exact result. Naming ranges is the professional way of creating calculations. Let's name another range. Let's say I want to name the range in red. So I'll click and drag. 
I'm selecting the range in red, and I want to name that range. Where, what do I do, and where do I go? I go to the name box to the left side of the formula bar, and here I would like to name this range Ronald. And then for the name to stick, I must hit enter. And when I hit enter, I would have named the range. Before using it in my calculation, I have to test that Excel recognizes the range by its name. I do that by clicking on the down pointing arrow of the name box. If I select the range, it becomes highlighted. That means Excel recognizes the range by its name. Let's go ahead and use it in a calculation. So I'll be creating a sum function using that range equal sum. What would you like to sum? I would like to sum a range named Ronald. I type RO, and here it is. It pops up in the IntelliSense list of Excel. I use my arrows up and down, and then I hit the tab key to select it, and then close the bracket and hit enter, and I get the result. In many cases, we create lots of names in our worksheet to the extent that we end up by forgetting which name refers to which range. So I'm going to simulate this situation, assuming that I forgot the name that I have. And luckily, we have a built-in helping tool in Excel. And this helping tool enables me to remember the name that I have. So I'm going to type an equal sign. And then I want to calculate the min. And then I hit tab, but I don't remember the name of the range. So I'm going to hit the F3 key. And the F3, the paste name dialog box, will open. And it will show me the different names. Well, I do have a name here, Greg and Ronald. I would like to find the minimum in the range named Ronald. Just I select it. And then when I hit OK, close the bracket, I hit Enter. And I get the result. If you create names and you want to modify these names later on, whether by adding or deleting, then we go to the central location for names. And the central location for names is available on the Formulas tab of the ribbon. When I click on the Formulas tab of the ribbon, here is the central location. We have the Name Manager. And when I click on the Name Manager, the shortcut is Control F3. It opens the Name Manager. I see the two names that I created. You select the one you want to modify or delete. And then you either select Edit or Delete. Let's say I select Edit. And I want to change the reference so I can select a different reference, let's say for this range, I just want two columns, so I'm modifying the range, I'm modifying the definition of the range, and then when I hit OK, now it's referring to what I selected only. If you enjoyed this training video, like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. See you in our next training video.